For many years, two of the best players in the world were never in doubt. But when it came to third place, it was always a debate. Often, it was a battle between Neymar and Bale. But once in a while, a third name used to pop up, Eden Hazard. In fact, sometimes it felt that he could challenge Messi and Ronaldo if he pushed himself a little bit more. I mean, the man himself told his teammates at Chelsea, if I want to be as good, I can be as good. Not as good as Messi because he's from a different planet, but I think I can get close to Ronaldo or maybe even better. So why would a player of his calibre, who knew exactly how good he was and how good he could be, not try to reach the highest level possible? To answer that, let us go back to where it all began. Born on the 7th of January 1991 to Thierry and Karine Hazard, Edom was the first of four brothers. Both of his parents played football, so at least they were going to give their kids the option to do the same. By the age of four, Thierry had already enrolled Eden in his hometown club, Royal Stade Bramois. So by the time Eden got to the youth ages, the coaches remarked that they had nothing left to teach him. Anyway, let's get back to his childhood. In the Hazard household, football was everything, and with the age gap between him and the third born only five, Eden always had someone to play with. Growing up, all the brothers fell in love with the same player, Zinedine Zidane. For all of them, the perfect career would be one that was similar to his, and this love for this particular player started some sort of rivalry among them, particularly between Eden and Torgan. At Club Royal Stade Bramois, Eden was dubbed a superhero by his coach. The teams Eden played for at our club would win 5-0, 6-0 or 7-0 and Eden would always score 4 or 5 of the goals, says Royal Stade Bramois president Alain Pauli. Eden played there for 4 years before moving to Belgian second division club 2Bs in 2003. While playing for 2Bs, he was spotted by a Lille scout who just couldn't believe what he was seeing. Soon enough, Lille contacted his parents and tried to get him to come to France. Upon his arrival in France, Eden trained in Lille's local sports school until the start of the 2007-2008 season when he signed his first professional contract. In the academy, he was easily the best player, but sometimes he seemed very disinterested. His coaches noticed this and on various occasions, they had to get his mother to speak to him. It turned out that he was bored of the routine and wanted to be given more opportunities. The club took note of that and it wasn't long before an opportunity came knocking on the teenager's door. When several players went away on international duty, Claude Puel called him up for his debut in a friendly against Club Bruges on the 16th of November. The coach clearly liked what he saw, so he was included in the 18-man squad to face Nancy in a proper league match. But he wasn't going to get his big break just yet. Against Nancy, he played only 12 minutes and returned to the reserves team. From time Time to time, Claude would include him in the first team and then send him back to the reserves. It wasn't until the appointment of Rudy Garcia that Hazard would be promoted permanently to the first team ahead of the 2008-2009 season. After various cameos off the bench, he found himself starting eight of the final ten matches of the season, helping the team to a fifth-place finish. After the season, he was named the Liga 1 Young Player of the Year, becoming the first non-French player to win it. At only 17, he had surpassed what his father achieved in his whole footballing career. This was a very proud moment in Thierry's life. In the season that followed, he won a second Liga 1 Young Player Award and was nominated for Player of the Year. His parents could clearly see that he was going to be a superstar and they felt that their work on him was done. Besides, they had three other sons who they wanted to nurture to be like him. He was now an adult and a pro at what he was doing. And my oh my, could they be any more wrong? Hazard began the 2010-2011 season as a starter for Lille, playing in all the opening matches and Europa League games. In this period, he scored only one goal, prompting Rudy Garcia to start benching him in late September. In his manager's words, he wanted him to breathe and learn that his performances were insufficient. His national team coach, Georges Likens, had stronger words 
words concerning what he was seeing from the youngster. He said that Hazard needed to work harder, both physically and mentally, to regain his lost form. His assistant, Mark Wilmots, went even harder by stating to the media that Hazard often displayed a lazy mentality while training with the national team. Things were now getting out of hand, so his club manager had to step back in to defend him. Nevertheless, Leakens doubled down on his comments and dropped Hazard in the match against Kazakhstan. He didn't even give him a spot on the bench. This whole furor lit a fire under Hazard's belly. Over the next two months, he scored or assisted in 80% of the games he played. On the 4th of March, he became the highest paid player in Liga 1 with a new contract that runs till 2015. In his first match after the news broke, he scored a goal from 38 yards out against rivals Marseille. The goal in itself was amazing, but what made it better was that he scored this goal with his weak foot. With a motivated Hazard, Lille looked capable of beating anyone, and they did exactly that. Come May, they had won the Coupe de France and the Liga 1 title. His resurgence was enough to get him named the Liga 1 Player of the Year, making him the youngest player to win the award. The next season, he had 38 goals and assists in 38 league games. Once again, he won the Liga 1 Player of the Year award. The time had come to make that big move, and even though Real Madrid were interested, Chelsea swayed him in the end. At Chelsea, everyone was satisfied with his debut season, in which he scored 13 goals in all competitions. But then Mourinho returned to Chelsea for a second spell and was demanding from his attackers. So when he put on a dribbling clinic in a 1-0 away victory over Manchester City, Mourinho declared him as the best young footballer in the world. In the next match, Hazard scored his first Premier League hat-trick against Newcastle United at home on the 8th of February. Yet amidst all the praise he was getting from managers and media, some of his teammates like Samuel Eto'o felt that Hazard was not putting in the needed effort in training. He advised the Belgian that if he did not train, he would soon be forgotten. Ronaldinho was the best player in the world, but at a certain moment, if you don't train every day, you'll pay for it. You can be messy. If you don't train Mr. Eden Hazard after two years, we will forget you. Football moves fast. These words really got to him because in the next season, we saw the most dangerous Hazard yet. For most of his career, he had been motivated to perform because he and his younger brother had a bet that any one of them with the lowest goal and assist tally every season would take the other brothers to dinner. He himself has been on record saying that. A few years ago, football was just football for me. If I didn't score, I didn't care too much as long as we won the game. But now Eto had called him out in a big way and he was determined to prove himself to him. In the 2014-15 season, he took on defenders at will, winning several penalties against teams like Arsenal, Crystal Palace and Maribor in the Champions League. He also opened the scoring on many occasions and even surprised Jose Mourinho by scoring a headed goal in a 2-0 win against Hull City. By the end of that season, Chelsea had won the Premier League and the League Cup. Unsurprisingly, Hazard won PFA Players Player of the Year award and Chelsea's Player of the Year for the second year in a row. Jose Mourinho declared him one of the top three players in the world and hoped that in the following season they could go one step further and win the Champions League. Imagine his surprise when Hazard returned from pre-season overweight. He didn't score in the Premier League till the 23rd of April, but by then, Jose Mourinho had already been sacked. Eto was no longer at the club to revive Hazard's form, and the whole season ended with a whimper from the defending champions. But Roman Abramovich was not going to take this lying down. He needed a tough manager who could whip his side into shape, and he found none other than Antonio Conte. The Italian manager was a proven winner and a hardcore trainer. The training was so brutal that even in a podcast eight years later, Hazard had to bring it up. Mikel Obi commented that Hazard didn't like training under Conte, and the Belgian concurred, stating, Not at all. All the week was training. I was going out to the match on Saturday. I need to enjoy it a little bit because I know the day after that, we're going to be back to the training ground. I have to do something. It's the only 90 minutes I can enjoy. And enjoy he did. 
Alongside Diego Costa and Cesc Fabregas, the attacking threat this Chelsea side were carrying was too much for everyone else. Hazard won the Man of the Match award three times in a row and also won the Player of the Month for October 2016. They won the league, with him narrowly missing out on the PFA award to teammate N'Golo Kante. The old Hazard was back and ready to explode with a World Cup year coming up. Unfortunately, an ankle injury meant that he would miss the entire pre-season. When he got back, he found some form, popping up to score a few goals here and there, but it was still a forgettable season as Conte eventually lost his job after failing to properly replace Diego Costa. Hazard now turned his attention to the FIFA World Cup in Russia. It was the tournament where his idol Zidane made his name, and boy did he play out of his skin. In his first match, he assisted the third goal of the match scored by Lukaku as Belgium won 3-0 against lowly Panama. He then scored twice in a man-of-the-match performance against Tunisia, sealing qualification to the knockout stage. He was rested for the final game against England and was ready to lead the team as they mounted a crazy comeback for two goals down against Japan in the round of 16. Now it was the time for the showdown he had been waiting for. Five-time champions Brazil stood in their way, with Neymar Jr. on hot form, but they had no answer for Hazard on that day. By the time the game ended, he had set a world record for the most successful dribbles in a World Cup game since 1966. For many, he had proved what he has always believed. Only Messi was better than him. After sweeping Brazil aside, Belgium were defeated in the semis by a France team who defended very deep and took advantage of a headed free kick to deny Belgium of their first ever World Cup final. After such a strong showing in the competition, FIFA awarded him with the silver ball, second only to Luka Modric. This was the proof he needed to know that he was capable of playing for the biggest team of all. Eventually, the move to Real Madrid happened, and he left as the only player to have won every individual Chelsea award. He was now ready to ride off into the sunset and be the first of his brothers to play for his footballing idol. Signing for a fee of 100 million euros, he was unveiled in front of 50,000 fans at the Bernabeu. For them, this was as big as the signing of Cristiano Ronaldo in 2009, only that Hazard was no Ronaldo. He arrived at pre-season quite fat and out of shape, but in the next three months, he shed the weight to produce some good performances, until the worst happened. In a Champions League group stage game against PSG, he suffered a micro-fracture to his right ankle in a clash with Thomas Moynier. Here he was, at the peak of his career, with the team of his dreams, coached by his idol, and he just just couldn't stay fit. Even worse, the new coach, Carlo Ancelotti, clearly preferred Vinicius to him. The team was doing just fine without him. They could even afford to have Bale on the bench with him. His story in Real Madrid was just a recurring nightmare. Worked so hard to come back from injury, get injured within the first three games upon your return. The real Hazard never truly arrived at the Bernabeu. This was the shell of a man who in the past couldn't be stopped by the strongest defenders in the Premier League. This was a man who coasted on external pressure to succeed, but when he really wanted to put in the effort for himself, his body betrayed him.